Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy. Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Revive thy church, Lord God of hosts, whensoever it doth fall into complacency and sloth, by raising up devoted leaders like thy servant John Henry Hobart, whom we remember this day, and grant that their faith and vigor of mind may awaken thy people to, the, to thy message and their mission. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first epistle of Saint, from the Epistle of Saint Paul to Titus. For a bishop, as God's steward, must be blameless. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered or addicted to wine or violent or greedy for gain. But he must be hospitable, a lover of goodness, prudent, upright, devout, and self-controlled. He must have a firm grasp of the word that is trustworthy in accordance with the teaching so that he may be able both to preach with sound doctrine and to refute those who contradict it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 78, verses 3 through 7, which are found on page 695 of the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 78, verses 3 through 7, which were recited together in unison. That which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers have told us, we will not hide from their children. We will recount the generations to come, the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord, and the wonderful works he has done. He gave his decrees to Jacob and established a law for Israel, which he commanded them to teach their children, that the generations to come might know, and the children yet unborn, that they in their turn might tell it to their children, so that they might put their trust in God, and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments. they will faint on the way 
and some of them have come from a great distance. His disciples replied, how can one feed these people with bread here in the desert? He asked them, how many loaves do you have? They said, seven. Then he ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves, and after giving thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples to distribute, and they distributed them to the crowd. They had also a few small fish, and after blessing them, he ordered them that, that these two should be distributed. They ate and were filled, and they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full. Now there were about 4,000 people, and he sent them away, and immediately he got into the boat with, the, with his disciples and went to the district of Dalmanutha. The Pharisees came and began to argue with him, asking him for a sign from heaven to test him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly I tell you, no sign will be given to this generation. And he left them, and getting into the boat again, he went across to the other side. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we celebrate the feast of John Henry Hobart. Hobart was a very important churchman of the of the 19th century who had a lot to do with the shaping of the Episcopal Church and the tradition uh, also that would become the Anglo-Catholic tradition. I'll read to you about him. He was one of the leaders who revived the Episcopal Church following the first two decades of its independent life after the American Revolution, a time uh, that has been described as one of suspended animation for the church. Hobart was born in Philadelphia on September 14, 1775. He was educated at the University of Philadelphia and at Princeton, graduating from Princeton in 1793. Bishop William White, his longtime friend and advisor, ordained him a deacon in 1798 and a priest in 1801. Having served parishes in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Long Island, Hobart became assistant minister of Trinity Church in New York City in 1800. He was consecrated as assistant bishop of New York on May 29, 1811. Five years later, he succeeded Bishop Benjamin Moore, both as diocesan bishop and as rector of Trinity Church. He died at Auburn, New York on September 12, 1830, and was buried there, and was buried rather beneath the chancel of Trinity Church in New York City. Within his first four years as bishop, Hobart doubled the number of his clergy and quadrupled the number of missionaries. Before his death, he had planted a church in almost every major town in New York State and had opened up missionary work among the Oneida Indians. He was one of the founders of General Theological Seminary and the reviver of Geneva, now Hobart College. A strong and unbending upholder of, the, of church standards, Hobart established the Bible and Common Prayer Book Society of New York and was one of the first American churchmen to produce theological and devotional manuals for laity. These tracts, as they were called, and the personal impression he made on the occasion of a visit to Oxford, were an influence on the development of the Tractarian movement in England. Both friends and foes respected Hobart for his staunch faith, his consuming energy, his personal integrity, and his missionary zeal. Remember that in the Gospel, the sign for today, we hear that from the feeding of the 4,000. It's not a typo, uh, it's not a mistake, it's not, it's not a, it's not a um, moment of revelation that all along you thought Jesus fed 5,000. And now here when we check the text, it's only really 4,000. There are two different accounts, the feeding of the 5,000 and the feeding of the 4,000. He does this with fewer loaves of uh, bread and an unidentified uh, number of fish. And the point, of course, of the story, which is a point of the story that we should be listening to over and over and over again, is that Jesus sends his disciples out into the crowd to feed them with insufficient means. And they do. That's it. That's all I have to say to you. I'll say it again. Jesus sends his disciples out into the crowd to feed them with insufficient means. And they do. That's it. How do they do it? They do it because Jesus blesses their work. He blesses the bread, he blesses the fish. And he blesses them their distribution of the bread and of the fish. The work that Jesus did in sending those out, those, those disciples out into the crowd to feed the crowd with insufficient means was invisible. Nobody could see it happening. We're told the story of the bread and the fish so that we can remember maybe when we see loaves of bread or when we see a few fish lying around, we might remember that once Jesus, more than once, Jesus was able to feed crowds with insufficient means. 
There is hardly a church, well, Trinity Church of New York is one of them, that would not be in this category that has to worry about feeding people with insufficient needs. Trinity Church of New York actually does not have to worry about that. They have more than, they have more than sufficient needs, means. Um, and, but the rest of us, <laughs> the rest of us, Hobart, um, are uh, thinking about the work that we have to do without uh, sufficient needs. I am absolutely sure that John Henry Hobart, whose portrait hung in my rooms at seminary when I was there, um, but John Henry Hobart was familiar with what it was like to be, have to go out into the crowd and feed people with insufficient needs. I am certain that Hobart was untroubled by that possibility and knew that, he, that his faith in Christ and the fact that Jesus would bless his work and the work of those he worked with was what accounted for his truthfulness, for his ability to accomplish what Jesus sent him out into the crowd to do, which was to feed them with insufficient means. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, and Nora and Gordon, my priest brothers and sisters, who worship and work in this place and parish, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacrament. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, the members of the Congress and the courts, Josh, our governor, and Jim, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, all those who are struggling for justice and denied, all those who are working to bring about an end to the sin of racism in our hearts and in our society, and all those beloved of this parish community who are sick or in need, especially Chris, George, John, Marlene, Marguerite, Howard, Will, Barbara, Anne, Wendy, Gary, Andrew, Donna, Bill, Kathy, Clayton, Rob, Sue, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We pray, as always, for peace in our time, for an end to the war in Ukraine, for an end to the gunfire in this city, and for an end to the scourge of opioid addiction that enslaves so many in this city. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially all those whose lives have been taken from them in acts of war and violence and in natural disasters in recent days. Beseech me to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace, so to follow the good example of examples of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, of blessed Mark, the Evangelist, of blessed John, the of Hobart, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator, and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, 
Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we do acknowledge you the bearer of our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve to please thee in unison of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith come unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. Of your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord receive this sacrifice at my hands, to the praise and glory of his name, both for our good and for that of all his Amen. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up, Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right, so is It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, for the wonderful grace and virtue declared in all thy saints, who have been the chosen vessels of thy grace and the lights of the world in their generations. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, 
but that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself one small thing, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that precious death, that is precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us a sign of peace. We do not presume to come to this side table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather what the promise of the coming to but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always in heaven. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to be the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink of his blood, that we may have more dwell in him. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that takest away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come into my room, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness for us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you, this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.